Hey, welcome back to Leah's Leaves. Uh, I'm in the garden today harvesting because it's overcast and we have a good chance of some thunder showers later. And so I'm getting ahead of the rain. Today we're going to talk okra. So come with me as we check out what's happening in our okra patch. I just have a little bit of okra. I grew it next to my sweet corn and uh, some peppers. I had some chives growing and I put in some spring onions. First of all, I don't know if you've ever seen an okra blossom, but they're beautiful. Okra plants produce really pretty blossoms. And those blossoms become the end of the okra fruit. Here's another one over here that's flowering and really beautiful. Flowering means fruiting. Look how pretty that is. So it's a pretty plant. Now my plants got beaten up by uh, Japanese beetles this year and I didn't fight them too badly. I gave them a spray. Uh, they were sprayed with neem oil when they were about um, eight week old plants and then they were sprayed again with some BT. It didn't really do anything but it also didn't inhibit growth. So and most of the I, I was just picking off like the really, really, really damaged leaves, I would just cut off right here at the leaf tip and let the rest of the plant keep growing. And it worked. I grew two varieties this year. Um, one is called Heavy Hitter. That was new to Baker Creek catalog recently. And the other one was the red burgundy okra that I grew last year. That's an example of the red burgundy. Look at that beautiful color. Once it cooks, it loses some of its colors, kind of goes back to green, and it has the exact same flavor that you're accustomed to with okra, which is very mild, and generally takes on the flavor of whatever you're cooking it with. I volunteer at a camp each summer. So a couple weeks ago, I went to camp for a few days, and when you go away for a couple days or you forget to check your okra plants, this is what happens. This okra right here, is a good nine inches long and it will keep growing but it's no longer edible you really want to pick them when they're even less than half of that this one here is about three inches long and that is ideal it's soft and tender perfect for eating raw or cooking over here is another good example these two this one that's straight here and this one that's bent over these are both past um, past their prime for eating but the one above it is still small enough. I'm going to harvest that today. What I do with the long ones is I leave them on the plant because I'm also going to save seed from my okra this year. And we're just going to let those grow. And as the plant matures and finishes its growing cycle, it will dry. And I'm going to let that these two pods, for example, this is off of a heavy hitter okra plant. I'm going to let those go until they're brown and dry. And then I will pick them off and and uh, when they're dry you can just shake it like a rattle and you hear all those dry seeds inside rattling around they're so easy to harvest once they're at that stage so let's pick some okra and see what we've got hiding in here those blossoms are just beautiful so Okra like that little red one, that's only about an inch and a half high right now. You can still see the end of the flower on it, it hasn't fully formed or dropped off yet. So I'm going to let that grow. That tip has a lot of activity on it. Those will become flowers that produce okra. There's a little baby okra here at the top of this heavy hitter. I'm going to give it another day or two before I harvest it. wanted to show you something else that I have going on in here. Oh, I'll show you these two. These are two more that are too big. They're too, they're just past their prime. So I'm just gonna let them grow and harvest them later for seeds. But I also interplanted some beans under here. We have very hot summers here in Virginia, Luray, Virginia zone 6B. And so it was a good spot to put some beans. They like the heat, but they don't like to be scalded. So these are the Tongue of Fire bush beans. I usually prefer bush bean varieties over pole beans um, because then I can hide them in places like this and don't need to worry about staking them. Look at the pretty 
color on there. They they get red. Hey, little ladybug. Welcome addition to the garden, even though she's eating my bean. <laughs> anyway, that was a good way to do it. I got to hide some beans in here in among the corn. It was sort of a really started as a three sisters method. I had sweet corn here. You can see a couple of stalks left over that had immature ears, so I didn't pull those yet. And then over here I had some squash. I can see the damage over here of a squash vine borer. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some other seeds in because these were both smallish varieties that um, don't need such a long growing season. One of them was a table queen acorn squash and one of them was a sugar pie pumpkin and I think I can have time to get a little harvest and now that I've pulled some corn I also have some corn started so I can get a second harvest of corn I just started those in seed plugs and we'll plant those out today and hopefully they'll get a good rain so this whole patch is looking a little weedy because I really just once I planted everything I just let it go wild over here I have a tender sweet watermelon and something chewed on the end of it. So it's still growing but it's not as mature. It, um, I can stake it up here. The tender sweet orange has orange flesh and it was a new variety that I'm trying. And then this one here is a little sugar baby watermelon. So it has a little more time to grow, it's not mature yet. And it got so hot that some of the blossoms fell off, so I might not get much of a melon harvest this year, but that's okay. We'll try again next year. That's the beauty of gardening is you can control a lot, but you can't tr control everything. So it really, even at the middle or the end of a season, there's still a lot of variables at work. And you may get some surprises and you may get some upsets, but you learn and then you try again. I'm gonna harvest a few more beans, a few more okra, and then I'll show you the grand total. First time growing hollyhocks. They're coming out. I have a vine growing on my hollyhocks, so I have to dismantle the poor things. I wanted to show you over here I was just coming over because I have a couple okra plants in the front yard, but this is also where I'm growing my Chinese red noodle beans. I went away to camp and there were no beans and I came back and look, there are beans. <laughs> so we'll be harvesting some Chinese noodle beans today to add to our tongue of fire bean harvest. We'll cook them up together. There's a little bean blossom and two twins. And they grow in these two bean sets. There's a very immature one. You can see it starts out greenish and then begins to streak red. And then here's a baby one that's already taken its red color, but that one's only about maybe 11 inches long. And so it has a ways to go. And then these are what the, ooh, look at that. <laughs> I have to turn the camera sideways in order to show these. These are approximately 16 to 20 inches long. They grow longer, but this is the length I'm going to grow them because they're nice and tender. And they're about the thickness of a pencil or slightly larger, but they're still bendy. That's the main thing. You want them to be able to wiggle. When they get any thicker than that, they're just a little bit tough, but this is a good length. Wow. I love the gomfrina. I'm so happy it grew. I said in a previous video how slow it was to develop. And I honestly thought I wasn't going to get any. And now look at this beautiful gomfrina patch. Those are beautiful um, as cut flowers fresh like this. Or let them dry. And they keep their color when they're dry. Aren't they pretty? And they're right in front of my bean teepee. And here we are, final garden haul today. These are my heavy hitter and red burgundy okra. Some of these are a little bit big, but I'm gonna go ahead and cook them up anyway. They're still edible, like I said, they just might be a little tough. These ones here that are uh, 
you know, finger length or, or uh, maybe palm length. Those are ideal. Four, anywhere from three to five inches is ideal. Okay. Over here, these tongue of fire beans. I didn't plant many of these. I think I only poked like eight seeds in the ground. So this is from eight different tongue of fire plants. By the way, if you ever grow these, this is the bush variety. The pole variety is sometimes called um, dragon tongue. And dragon tongue can come in bush bean or pole bean variety. And either of them make perfect tender beans like what I'm cooking, um, picking them for now. But ideally, if you have the space to dedicate to them and you can grow enough of them, they're really great dry as a dry bean. Which means you can let them go to full maturity until they dry on the plant in the early fall and harvest them after they're completely dried out and shell them, crack the shells open and pull out the dry beans and store them in an airtight container and cook with them through the summer. I just don't have enough land to dedicate to a dry bean crop that would make it worth it because that would take three or four months of growing for you know, one or two servings of dry beans. So to me, it's um, more economical to pick them young and eat them like green beans. But if you have the space, they make an excellent drying bean for storing. And then the last thing of these Chinese noodle beans, the, this is my first year growing this. And so I'm very pleased that I got a first crop and there are more on the way, but look how pretty and healthy they are. Again, they're, they're thinner than my pinky. You know, maybe a pencil pencil width or just slightly wider is ideal. Anyway, um, I hope you're having a great and growing, pros, uh, growing season. Today I'll be processing tomatoes, making some sauce. I'll be enjoying this little Minnesota midget cantaloupe that I picked because the mother plant got dried out while I was at camp and it's not going to survive. So I'm just going to eat what it produced and plant something else in its place. I actually think I might have enough time in my growing season to go ahead and get another cantaloupe harvest because they're a small variety and they don't take as long to grow. Let me know what you're growing. Let me know what's going well for you. And if you've ever tried these no noodle beans, I've eaten them before. I've, I've harvested them at another person's garden and got to eat them, but this is my first year growing and I'm very pleased with how they're turning out. And this heavy hitter okra does not disappoint. It is really fruiting, just like the ad said it would. And the burgundy okra, it doesn't produce as much fruit, but it tastes just as good, and the flowers are gorgeous. I didn't have any red burgundy blossoms to show you today, but they're like the green varieties, except they have a little more red streak in the flowers. Um, and the flowers aren't as yellow, but more white. Anyhow... Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm learning a lot. I'm sharing it here, and I hope you'll come grow with me. Bye.